Hey everyone, it's Mark, Skipper Mark. So the garage is empty, meaning there's no car in it. And the engine stand is out from its storage spot. That must mean that Matt has something planned. So Matt's going to be taking out his engine and giving it a little more pep. And going from this... to this. Last time when we uh, did this, he put the hood in the front porch. This time we're gonna just set it on top of the car. Okay. I ran inside for a few minutes to do some stuff and he's taken the carburetor off, the distributor, uh, is out. So one of the things Matt decided to do this time was shrink wrap the car. He used saran wrap and put that around the fenders, the bumpers, and anywhere he leans so that it doesn't uh, get scratched up. What Matt does is he writes what the wires are going to so when he goes to reconnect them up it just says alternator things like that Matt's goal today is to get the engine so that everything's disconnected and ready to come out first thing tomorrow morning He's really making great time. Radiator is done draining. He took the headers off. Now he's just doing some electrical stuff. Normally that cover doesn't have to come off, but Matt has an extra fan in the front and it's a pain to take the fan off. Thank you. Sorry. Just stay there. This is the extension for the uh, bell housing bolts. Why is it so long? Because you got to go over the transmission to get to the top two. It's been five hours since Matt has started working on the engine and it's ready to come out. Mom. Mom. <laughs> the internet said it couldn't be done, but he got the bell housing bolts out without having to lower the transmission down. What's up, you're cracking. Okay, let me just check, because I want to look. Yeah, okay. Oh, we're good. Uh-oh, it's not staying now? We might be maxed out. That's not getting enough room to lower it. You want to get on the car? Yeah. You'll have to touch it. It's not going to look spin. Oh, okay. It's not going to swing? No, I just don't know if the valve cover is going to hit. That's the bell housing. And then the bolts go through the bell housing to the ball.
Red sealer. Mm-hmm. The piece of grass that you left in on the union.
because this is a roller cam, there's a little link bar that connects the two lifters together. This prevents them from spinning and keeps the roller bearing in the right direction at all times. Hey everyone, it's been a few days since um, I've updated the video here and the reason why is Matt was doing stuff that really couldn't easily be photoed. So since he had the engine out, um, he decided to replace the torque converter and he also um, is rebuilding his engine mounts rather than buy new ones for a couple hundred bucks. He just got an insert for them and took them out and rebuilt them. Can you tell, say a little bit about it? No, I'm putting in braking oil. Braking oil. 1030. And what do you do with it? Put it in the engine to, to break in. All right, so if I start recording, can you... Re <laughs> <laughs> you should have been recording already. Yeah, don't and what does that do? It, it makes the oil go. Yeah. I love it. It makes it spins the pump and it's like if the engine was running oil goes everywhere. Ready? Yep. All right, today is the day. The engine is mostly done, and Matt's going to put it in the car. With it. Is that Loctite? Mm-hmm. Loctite blue or red? Blue. And what does that do? It locks the bolt in. Because it could like vibrate loose? You don't want it to come out, so. It's clear of it. Mm -hmm.
going. And Okay, so the engine is in. Uh, Matt just has a few little things to do, such as hook up the carburetor, put the radiator in, put the headers on, and hook up the hoses and electrical, and it should be ready to go. <clears throat> Success. Headers are on. I'm in position. Okay, minus two. Oh, too tight. You ready? Just move it, Mom. Is it good? Yep. Oh, no, my shoe came off. Yes, I again. So close. So close. Hey, Vanna. Hold on, let me uh, back up a hair. Yep, because I'm on... Um, We're stuck on the bump. Yeah, I couldn't push. There was a slippery, like, plastic thing. Oh, in my there. rag, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're good. We're good. Yeah, you can stop it. Okay. Turn the red switch on the left on. Engaging. Okay, you can shut it off. It's three of the highest. Oh man. Matt likes to use a extra fan just to give a little extra air under the engine so that um, it helps get it you know, keeps it cooler. It's gonna start and it's probably gonna rev up and go vroom and then it's gonna shut back off because I'm just putting fuel in the carburetor but there's none in the line so it's gonna take a little vroom. It's gonna take a little bit to get fuel to the, the carburetor. Hold on. Oh, let me get down. Okay, you ready? No. Okay, start it. Okay. Okay. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. He's gonna do that. Okay. Start it. Should I hold? Should I hold it? No, no, no. Because there's no gas anyway. So. So I turn it and then let go. When it goes vroom, let go. Okay. Like you're, I did. You, yeah, you're doing good. Okay. You ready? Our battery's dying though. Okay. Hold on, let me just see if this isn't like RPM. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yep. Yep. I gotta get a screw so I can up the idle.
So after we broke in the engine, Matt started thinking that he would want a better carburetor for this rather than the one that was on it. And he was going to wait and get it later on, but he went to the Holly website and they had a Black Friday sale. So he got this 650 double pumper for $120 less than it should have been. Oh, hold on. Okay, just floor it. Just to adjust the... Do it again. Harder. Is that all the way down? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Turn it over. I don't know how quick it'll start up or how long it'll take, so... You know. If it pops, just stop. <laughs> you ready? Okay. Okay. Just make sure you're neutral, right? I think so, yeah. Okay. Try again? Again. Alright, should I hold it longer? No, no. Okay, one more time. Okay, one more time. Okay, go. Just turn it over real quick, it's on fire, so. Turn it over? Yeah. All the way? Yes. Good? Yeah. Matt hasn't actually driven the car yet because um, after he broke it in we just pushed it back rather than drive it in and um, after he put the new carburetor on it he didn't even drive it out and then we got a huge blizzard and tons of snow so we couldn't actually do anything oh yeah and don't laugh at the small air cleaner here uh, Matt had a green filter I'm not exactly sure what it was called I think it was just green but it was a 14 inch and the problem was it hit when he closed the hood. Now, if you notice, the hood actually has a hole in it that easily could accommodate a 14 inch air cleaner. But the problem is these engines are offset in the car about, I don't even know, they're just offset a little to the left. So what happened was when he went to close the hood, it hit on the left side of the air cleaner. And you can actually maybe see here, um, it looks like the old air cleaner might have rubbed also and that was when the engine wasn't even raised up as tall as it as it is now so he picked this air cleaner up at AutoZone yesterday so he would have some protection while he was running the car he hopes to get the 14 inch one back on and he'll probably have to cut the hole a little bit but um that's going to be another day project when it's not so cold So a few days ago, a lady who doesn't even live on our street came over and complained saying our car was too loud. So I checked and um, in our state, the law is that it has to be less than 75 decibels at 50 feet out in the open. So we're gonna check the decibels and actually see what it is. Um, now it's gonna be a little bit louder than if it was out in an open area because it's in the garage, so it's gonna echo and be a little bit more boomy. But uh, let's check it out and see what it is.
So the engine's done, the car's ready to go, but he's having a little issue with the timing. The problem is, because it's got such a big cam in it, the engine needs a high initial timing setting to run. It won't even run with the timing set really low. So he's got the timing set high for it to run at idle. The problem is he doesn't want it to, he doesn't want the timing to advance even more when it's running. He wants it to stay at that initial setting. Unfortunately, he's got a HEI distributor and it doesn't allow to lock the timing. Some higher end distributors do, but this one doesn't. So we found a website that we'll link to in the description that actually shows how to do it. Um, I'm not gonna get into detail about how to do it here. I actually made a video, which I'll link to up above. You can watch that video and it explains exactly how to do this. But now that he's got that set, it seems to be running good. So we're gonna do a few more things and then hopefully we'll get this ready to go on the road. But we also have to deal with winter because here in Connecticut, it's um, still very cold and there's a lot of snow around and he doesn't want to drive it with salt and stuff on the road. So check out that video. Um, it should be helpful, but if you have any questions, definitely leave a comment and we'll be glad to answer anything that we can. All right, so the car is mostly done. Matt's gonna take it out for a test drive, just up and down the street a couple times and see how it goes. Thank you for watching. We're going to end the video with beautiful engine sounds. <laughs>